Take your Bible, turn to Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20. As I've been preaching on these messages on the Ten Commandments, I want you to ask yourself the question, what has been the result in our nation? What has been the fruit in our country of, number one, forbidding teachers back in 1963 from leading children in any type of Christian prayer, which generally that's what it was, what has been the result in our country since they removed prayer out of school in 1963? What has been, yeah, what has been the result in our country since, uh, oh, who was that judge down south that fought for the right to hang a copy of the Ten Commandments in his courtroom? Judge, yeah, Roy Moore fought and lost the right to hang a copy of the Ten Commandments. There's a copy of the Ten Commandments hanging in the Supreme Court room. Not because of any significant religious concept, but the fact that it represents, and there are other representations in that room, of famous lawgivers. Things like the Magna Carta, the Ten Commandments, and so on. These are notable times in history where civilization was made better by a set of agreed upon laws to follow, morals to follow, guidelines that kept you safe and kept me safe. Number one, from each other. Number two, from an infringing government. Because any law that does not put barriers and stops against government is no law. Amen? It is no law. So what is wrong with having listed in a, in a courtroom... A set of moral standards, especially this one. Thou shalt, in fact, let's, we're going to read from the beginning. That's what we've been doing. Exodus 20, verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image nor any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and howled it. Now, that, let me ask you a question. What is wrong with having a copy of that listed in a courtroom, especially where the issue of labor is coming up and how long a man must work for a company? Because it used to be there was nothing stopping a company from making you work seven days a week in and out every single day with no day off. There was no stops to it whatsoever. And if you dared want to take a day off to rest, 
You got fired because there was always somebody else there wanting to take your job. This was one of the bases of how we live our lifestyle in this country of the five or six day work week and giving people at least one day off per week. The basis of that did not come from Rome. It did not come from Babylon. It came from God. Somebody say amen. And then he said in verse 12, Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. It's like your mama told you. I brought you into this world and I'll take you right back out too. Amen. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. What is wrong with these commandments? Especially when they are still the basis. Do you know in courts to this very day, in a land full of adultery, Adultery is still a legal basis for a divorce. All the woman or the man has to show is that, yes, adultery has taken place. And the judge says, okay. And that came from God. Now, verse 16. This is the ninth commandment. Thou shalt not bear false witness... Against thy neighbor. Now I want you to think about what that means. Think about who your neighbor is. Deuteronomy 5.20. Neither. Again, he, again, every time Deuteronomy is quoting or re-quoting these. He's saying, neither shalt thou bear false witness. Neither shalt thou uh, commit adultery. Neither shalt thou kill. And what he's doing, in my opinion, he's doing what James said. If a man offend the law in one point, he is guilty of all. So let's say that you find out that somebody in the church is carrying on outside of their marriage. And you get all rough in the gills over it. Get all mad, start blowing gossip everywhere. I think we ought to throw them out. I would ask you the question, have you lied in the last month? Because according to God, they're the same. If a man offends the law in one point, he is guilty of all. Can I make it any clearer than that? I've used this illustration dozens of times. If you have a rental agreement, signed contract with somebody, all you have to do is break one of the terms of that lease agreement. That's all you have to do. Either break the machine, which is what I do a lot, Kick a hole in the wall, or don't pay one month's rent, or get behind on half, half of the payment of the rent. All you have to do is break the lease in one point, and your landlord can take that to a judge and say, they broke the contract, I want them out. And 99 times out of 100, you're going to go look for another place to live. Why? Because you broke the lease. Yeah, but I didn't break it that big. You broke the lease. You understand that? When God gave this covenant in the Old Testament, He said, keep all of the commandments. And Israel said, all that thou hast said, we will do. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I need help preaching this message. Lord, you woke me up at 5 o'clock this morning. I'm glad you did. And I pray, dear God, that the words that 
come out of my mouth would be in accordance with your word. In fact, Father, I would just soon you put me out of the way. And Jesus, you the preacher, come and preach to these people in a way that I know that I'm not capable of doing it. Father, I've lied before. I've borne false witness against my neighbor. And I'm ashamed of it. So, Father, Lord, would you speak to us and deal with us about truth and about knowing truth and having truth in us. Because there are some, Father, who just, they can't stop lying. And they just cannot find it in themselves to be truthful. And Father, I pray, God, that somehow, some way, this message would reach them, deal with them, and speak to them over their lying tongue. Because all it does is destroy people's lives. Father, forgive us for the sins of our mouth. And what comes out of our mouth is obviously what has been in our heart. And Father, forgive us for that as well. Bless your word, I pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Turn to Romans 13. Show you what I mean by what I was saying here. Romans chapter 13. Well, I like to hear that. Let's get a little bit of the, the context here. The context in Romans 13 is, let every soul, this is verse 1, let every, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. So let me ask you a question. Let's say that something went on at work and you were a witness to it or you were a party to it and it ends up in a courtroom and in that courtroom you have been subpoenaed by the court and they bring you in there and they're going to put you on the witness stand and two different sides are going to ask you a series of questions what is the first thing they do before they allow you to take the stand in a courtroom? What is the one thing they do? Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and no nothing but the truth? And they used to say, so help you God, some of them still do. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? And let me ask you a question. Is there a penalty for those who tell a lie on the witness stand and get caught at it? You can go to jail for 90 days for that. And if it's serious enough, you can go to jail for probably a year or two for perjury, lying on the witness stand. It is, and what you've done is, you didn't just tell a lie, you lied against your neighbor. Who is your neighbor, by the way? Jesus made it plain to us who our neighbor was in the, in the story of the Good Samaritan. Our neighbor is everybody we meet. Our neighbor is humanity. Our neighbor is other people, whether we like them or not, whether we're on their side in the courtroom or not, it's still wrong to bear a false witness against them 
Even if it's going to cost you money, it's wrong. I'd rather lose the money and tell the truth. I got, I was in a funeral procession years ago and um, was in my car and it was, um, it was Steve Hammond's mom. And I met him there at the funeral home and I was going to follow him uh, to the to the cemetery. We were out here uh, up, up in St. Louis, up here at the River de Pere Boulevard. And we're right at River de Pere and River de Pere Boulevard. And I'm in the funeral procession. I got my thing hanging on my mirror and I've got my lights flashing. And I'm near the back of the funeral procession. And I see that the our light turns red. But according to Missouri law, I still have the right of way. You're not allowed to interfere in a funeral procession. As long as everybody is following the law with the lights and the signs and everything like that, you're not allowed to interfere in that. Well, as I cross that intersection, pow! A guy T-boned me. Knocked me all over the place. Okay? It just destroyed the car and everything like that. So I went and talked to a lawyer. I wasn't looking for millions of dollars. Okay, I didn't go to Brown and Crouppen or anything like that. I just thought I'm going to, you know, find out, find out who did what. And so we had a deposition one night. And so I went to the lawyer's office and the other guy's lawyer, get this, Chris. The other guy's lawyer used to be a professional wrestler in St. Louis. I don't remember his name. But I'm just going, oh, great. Man, I'm minced meat. He's going to chew me up, spit me out. He started asking me questions about what happened. And he would ask more questions and more questions. And then I noticed after a while he'd double back and he'd say, now, let's go back and let me ask you about what I said before. Tell me, the, and he asked me the same question in a different way. And I would say, as I said... And I would shoot it out again. I'd say the same thing again. You know what he was looking for? He was looking for me to come up with an alternative story. And I had decided, and I'd prayed, God, help me tell the truth. I don't care if it costs me. Help me tell the, tell the truth. So I did. And I walked out. The other guy walked in. The lawyer called me the next day. He said, well, he said, the good news is you did really good in there. The bad news is so did the other guy. And it was, it was an accident. He didn't see the funeral procession. He saw that he had a green light. I saw the funeral procession and it was just boom. It was one of those things that happened. Okay. Uh, we had a situation years ago where our daycare got charged uh, by Division of Family Services with child abuse over a baby that ended up with a broken foot. And we, for the life of us, could not figure out how this child ended up with a broken foot. Finally, it dawned on us that as the daycare worker was trying to put her into the high chair, that her foot got caught and it twisted it a little bit. And I'm, I mean, I'm scared to death. I am just, I'm, I am scared to death. And I'm, I, I called this, this worker in. And I'm on the verge of telling her, make up whatever you think will pass. I'm on the verge of telling her to lie. And the Holy Ghost says, Mike, don't you dare. Don't you dare do that. See, I've been, I would have been bearing false witness against my neighbor. And I said, tell them the truth. Tell them what you did. And when she did, the DFS worker, the officer assigned with her, came up and said, we think it was an accident. It's no big deal. This is over with. Tell the truth. Romans 13, 9. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, 
Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So, you've got neighbors that live around you. You're all the time bragging and boasting and talking about how you go to church on Sunday and Wednesday night and how you read the King James Bible and 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 uh, how you how we we just have we have Bible study at our house every night. Boy, and, we, and you constantly bragging and boasting to every neighbor in your neighborhood about how good a Christian you are. But then your neighbor goes out one morning, the dogs knock your trash can over, and he's picking up your Bud Light cans and your whiskey bottles and putting them back in the trash can for you. You know what you just did? You bore your false witness against your neighbor. He thinks you're a joke now. Yep, that's them Christians for you. That's them church people for you. They go around bragging about how good they are. They're just as rotten as everybody else. In fact, I just soon trust the, the bar crowd as I would the church crowd any day of the week. Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth and the light of this world. And he said, if the salt is lost its savor, it is therefore good for nothing to be trampled uh, to be cast out and trampled under the foot of men. And we are, as Christians in this country, being trampled under the feet of men. Why? Because we will not tell the truth. The reason why we will not tell the truth is because we do not love our neighbor. Who likes being lied to? Raise your hand. I hate being lied to. I hate being lied to. If you don't like being lied to, then don't lie to anybody else. Luke 8, 15. Look at what Jesus said. Is the good ground in the parable of the seed and the sower? But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good... What kind of heart? An honest heart. Honesty does not begin in the head. It begins in the heart. Cubby, I'm glad you're here this morning. I'm going to pull on your uh, years of experience of pulling people over. And trying to judge whether or not there's something in their car that shouldn't be there. When you walked up to their window, did you ever have anybody say, here's two pounds of marijuana, that's what I got. They always lied about it, didn't they? And you know what he... What he was trained to do, tell whether or not they're lying. Can I see your license? Sure. What are you shaking for? I'm just shaking. What are you sweating for? Oh, it's hot. It's 20 degrees outside. Well, I've been running. They make up all kinds of lies to cover up that lie. And it's one thing after another. And he knows they're lying. You know why? Lies come from the head. Truth comes from the heart. That's what he said. Which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. Your heart, I believe, is the seed of your soul and also the seed of your consciousness, your conscience. Your conscience always knows whether you did right or you did wrong. And it's your conscience that knows whether or not you're lying or not. Acts 6.3 Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among ye seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. This is how the deacons were to be selected. Men of honest Report. Not, and he, what he was saying was, go around their neighborhood 
and their marketplaces where they go and buy their goods and trade their goods and ask everybody, what kind of person is Stephen? What kind of trader is he? Does, he? does he get by with stuff? Does he lie? Does he tip the scales? Does he try to jip you all the time? Or is he an honest man in your opinion? Is he a good man? And when they got the report back on these seven men, they said, these are the seven men right here that we will place in charge of the Lord's business. How many churches have had people involved in the finances of the churches only to embezzle money? I knew a, a church over in Oklahoma where the church secretary uh, was in charge of, of receiving and counting all the money making the deposits in the bank and so on. And um, it, it looked like that the, the, when the pastor was there, I can tell you who the pastor was. It was Brother Mike Hutzel. And when he was there, I mean, he, he knew the number of people that were in the pews. And he was thinking, man, we ought, to, we ought to at least be able to meet our bills this month. But for some reason, the bank account was going low. It didn't look like an, a lot of money was coming in. It wasn't, you know, he wasn't trying to get into the, who wrote what or what, who gave what or whatever it was. But they were, they were starting to hurt financially. Come to find out that that woman, because of those stupid casinos, was embezzling money from the church to the tune of about 40 grand. Stealing money from the church. And when it caught up to her, she tried to kill herself and her husband was, was able to stop it. She did not want to face the reality of her sin. She'd rather lie about it. Romans twelve seventeen Recompense to no man evil for evil. And then he said this, Provide things honest in the sight of all men. So when you fill out your taxes, are you honest? When you fill out your tax form, are you honest? Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and unto God what is God's. And you remember, even your government is your neighbor. This is your country, is it not? And if you owe the government, why would you deprive your own country of what legally it is entitled to? You do wrong and think nothing of it. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Yeah, boy, I tell you what, I hate, get, I hate getting rid of this car. I tell you what, this car, I, I know it's got high mileage on it, but I'm telling you, she purrs like a kitten. Boy, this thing, never had a problem out of it whatsoever. I mean, this car, I mean, she's sweet. I hate to get rid of her, but we're just, you know, we're tired of paying taxes on it and everything like that. We just, and we're just going to sell it to you. Is there anything wrong with it? No, there's nothing wrong with it. And the guy gets down the road, boom. You lied through your teeth. You think God's going to bless that? 2 Corinthians 8, 21. Provi he said it again. Providing for honest things. Not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. That means quit lying and quit spreading lies. Everybody listen now. This is this part where I get mean and I get on my high horse on this thing. My soapbox. You've got email. And you've got Facebook Messenger, and you've got text message, and you're spreading internet rumors like viruses all over the world. And you have no idea whether those stories are true or not, but you spread them around anyway. If somebody on the internet makes up a story, is that a lie? 
If you take that story and then pass it around to people or post it on your Facebook page, is that a lie? And whose lie is it? It's yours. It's your lie. Because you did not provide things honest in the sight of all men. And it is no wonder. I got notified by one of the admins in our Bethel Church Facebook group that Facebook is monitoring our group because people are posting things that in Facebook opinion are not true and we are at risk for getting shut down. Now I'm telling you, I'm sick of the lies that are posted. I'm sick of them. I don't read most of them anyway. If I do, I can only get in so far before I just say, this is nonsense. That kind of stuff has got to stop. Can I get an amen out of somebody? Amen. It's got to stop, people. You are a representative of Bethel Church. You are a representative of this ministry. And you're a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't know it's true, beyond a shadow of a doubt, run, run, it, run it through a jury just like a judge or a lawyer would. Be critical of everything that you see on the internet. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. It would be safer and better for you to just give people the word of God. I don't care if you amen that or not. 2 Corinthians 13, 7. Now I pray to God that you do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that you should do that which is honest, as though we be as reprobates. Do that which is honest. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. The reason why you cannot tell the truth is because you do not know the truth. Psalm 51, David is our prime example in Scripture of what happens when you lie. Committed adultery with one of his mighty men's wives, Bathsheba. Uriah the Hittite was in the list of David's mighty men, one of his best soldiers. And when she was found with child to cover up the pregnancy, David tried to bring Uriah in to go home to be with his wife to make it look like it was his child. When Uriah, as an honorable man, refused to go into his wife saying, my men, my fellow soldiers are out there fighting. Why should I come in and lie in my own bed with my wife and eat at my own table and be comforted? I should be out with my brethren fighting the war. So David had him killed on the front line. And then brought in his wife Bathsheba to marry her to cover up the pregnancy. What happened to the child? God killed it. And God sent Nathan the prophet. And he said, David, thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. I would have given thee, if you, if you would have asked for anything, I would have given thee such and such things. But because of David's lie, his house was destroyed. Amnon, 
David's son raped Tamar, David's daughter. Absalom then had Abnon killed. Then Absalom took over his father's throne temporarily and would have killed his own father because of one lie that he told. So now David, Psalm 51, 6, Behold thou desirest truth in the inward parts. Where? What's the worst kind of lie you can tell? The lie to yourself. The lie to yourself that says, I can, listen to this, that I can do this and get away with it. Dave, what was you, what was you asking me about before church? You said there was a guy... Didn't you say there was a guy on the internet said that it, you could take the mark of the beast and still go to heaven? Was that you? No. Who was that? Cubby. Okay. Wrong beard. <laughs> yeah, some idiot on the internet said that during the tribulation you can take the mark of the beast and still go to heaven. Is that true? No, it's a big fat lie, isn't it? It's, he's bearing false witness against all of his neighbors. And those who believe it are, going to, are doomed to hell. They're doomed to the lake of fire if they end up believing that. They have not the truth on the inward parts. Therefore, they cannot tell the truth. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Then later on he said, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. All because of a lie. In John eight forty four, Jesus said, Ye are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Now let me ask you this question. Let's just get down to the nitty gritty of it. Now I'm about to let you go. And I want you to think about what is at the core of just about every lie. And it says it right here. He seeketh his own. So in probably 99% of every lie that's ever been told, what is the purpose of that lie? It is so that I can gain or maintain me. When they asked... Um, Who was it? The billionaire raping all those teenage girls. Epstein. When they were asking Epstein all, all these questions. Have you ever, do you know so and so? No. Or his lawyer would say, objection. He was lying through his teeth. And where is he now? He's paying for it, isn't he? Every one of them. And the purpose of his lies was to protect, number one, his $500 million fortune. Protect his position with men like Prince Andrew, Bill Clinton, and others. And to keep doing his sin... And it didn't matter to him what it did to those girls or anybody else. He didn't care. And that's why you lie. 
because you just flat out don't care about anybody else but you. He is a liar and the father of it. Wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator. This is now getting into the Bible issue. I'm almost done. This is getting into the Bible issue now. You change the Bible so that you can keep your sin and still believe that you are born again and saved and going to heaven. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change their natural use into that which is against nature. And why did that happen? Because they lied. And they didn't want to know the truth. 2 Thessalonians 2.10 This is going to happen. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That man that called me from England. What does it take for a man to confess to another man, even if it's on the phone? I've committed the sin of sodomy. What bravery that a man could admit probably one of the most heinous sins that we have in our society. And he asked for the mercy of Almighty God and God gave it to him. You see, he could have done what everybody else does, what all the other sodomites do. Well, the Bible's wrong. We, we need to change the Bible. Let's rewrite the Bible. Or the Bible was written by man or whatever. God made me this way and so he loves me this way and I'm going to stay this way. They make up all kinds of things so they can keep their sin. Remember, lies are about you. Revelation 22, verse 15, For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. That's who God does not allow in heaven. Boy, I tell you what. Let's, uh, let's see here. Or show me where to go. Turn to Deuteronomy 19. We'll close. These six things that the Lord hate. One of them is a false witness that speaketh lies. Proverbs 25. A man that beareth false witness against his neighbor is a maul and a sword and a sharp arrow. Jesus said, these things proceedeth out of the heart, evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. Here's, now, here, here's what's going to happen to you in your lives. Does God change? Nope. Deuteronomy 19, verse 16. This was the law that God gave to Moses. This is how he said it's going to be. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong. Let me stop here for a minute. Who were the two guys that came to testify at Jesus' trial? Did they tell the truth? They were false witnesses, weren't they? The guys that Jezebel went and got... At Nabal's trial, did they tell the truth? No, they were false witnesses. And Nabal paid the price for their lies. But did God forget it? 
God had already created the dogs that were going to lick the blood of Ahab. Verse 17, when that happens, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priest and the judges, which shall be in those days. And I want you to remember something. One of these days, you are going to stand not before men, but before the Lord and give an account of everything that has come out of your mouth. The judges, verse 18, shall make diligent inquisition. And behold, if the witness be a false witness and have testified falsely against his brother, then shall ye do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother. So shalt thou put the evil away from among you. So if you had said about your brother, you know, my brother owes me 500 shekels. He told me he was going to pay it last year. He never has. He, the dude, he owes me 500 shekels. I'm tired of waiting on it. They, and you go to the judges, and the judges make inquisition, and they ask everybody in town, everybody in the, in the tribes, everybody in the area, did you ever hear of a deal between the two brothers over 500 shekels? No, that's the first time I've ever heard of it. They'll come back and they will require 500 shekels of the guy who told the lie on his brother. And if it was worse, such as a, a herd of 100 cattle, my brother took a hundred cattle out of, my, out of my farm. I know he did. And you lied about it because... You lost them or you sold them in the markets or whatever. Then what's going to happen is you're going to have to pay your brother a hundred head of cattle to clear up the lie. And then it gets worse. If you accused your brother or your neighbor of messing around with your wife and the thing wasn't so, you know, the penalty for that was death. And if it was found out that you lied against your own neighbor, your own brother. An eye for an eye. Look at it. Then verse 19. Then shall you do unto him as he had thought to do unto his brother. And so shalt thou put the evil away from among you. And those which remain shall hear and fear and shall henceforth commit no more any more such evil among you. And thine eye shall not pity. But the life shall go for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. Hand for hand, foot for foot. You just remember, when you bear false witness against your neighbor, that God, your judge, is watching. And he will judge in righteousness. And the lies you told there's always a price to pay for them. Let's bow our heads. I want you to examine yourself for a minute, will you? What do you lie about? What do you lie about? Because I believe it's inherent in our nature that we do. What do you lie about? Father, come before you today. On behalf of these people and along with these people, being among them and being their equal, we do bow our head in reverence to you, Father. And out of the abundance of our heart, Father, we want to tell you now the truth. We've lied. We've borne a false witness. We have ruined our testimony. 
to the people around us, our co-workers, our wives, our husbands, and our children. And our children, Father, they, they seem to know when mom and dad is lying. They're the ones who see mom and daddy at church. But know how they are when they're at home. And in that, mom and daddy is bearing false witness against their own children. Father, I pray, dear God, to those who are serial liars. Those who have nothing and no truth on their, in their inward parts and are incapable of telling the truth. God, would you... As a loving father chastise them. Bring them godly sorrow to bring them to repentance. Lies can be forgiven. But lies must be exchanged for truth. Father, help us, Lord, when we come before you to confess our sins in truth, sparing nothing, for you are the God that sees everything. Father, help this church to remain faithful to the truth of the word of God. And help us as people of God in every place we go, in every dealing that we have with man. Help us, dear God, to provide all things honest in the sight of all men. And thus be known by our neighbor as someone who will tell the truth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bless your word above your name. We pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said. Amen. Would you stand to your feet, please?